What's going on, everybody? We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I'm Chris Adams. And joining us, as always, on all of these breakdowns is Miss Kelsey Kirkland. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Excited to talk about this episode. It was pretty amazing, and I got yeah. a lot of opinions on it, so I'm ready to talk about it. Okay. Uh, real quick, behind the scenes, uh, I hit go live, and apparently we didn't go live, so we've already been talking and introducing this episode for the past six minutes, and <laughs> anyways, uh, I feel like we're caught in a time loop, like Loki having to interact with Sif yep. again. Uh, we will cover <laughs> that. Uh, speaking of which, there will be spoilers, spoilers in this episode. Yeah, there will be spoilers in this episode. If you have not watched it, go watch it. Come back and watch this later. It's okay. We won't be offended. Um, again, if you're watching this live, let us know in the chat that you are here. We like to see your face or at least your avatar. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to get our bring our attention to, go to streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics slash tip. We will also accept stream uh what was it? whatever they're called through youtube now super take chats a pause. take a breath pause <laughs> i don't have to we don't have time for that we got we got a lot to get through so let, let's crank <laughs> through this real just quick do it. just do it and move yeah. on just i will patreon.com slash cinefanatics hop on the tier that's good for you tomorrow night if you are at the five dollar due tier you will be able to join us for the fcl replay my brother had a match uh yesterday in the first class league for the movie trivia showdown we will be reviewing that match getting his thoughts feelings and opinions if you're at the five dollar tier this month you will be able to join us and hear that as well. That'll be tomorrow night on the $5 tier on Patreon. Next. Now slow down so people can understand what you're saying. I know. I'm starting to sound like the Micro Machines guy. If y'all remember like from back in like the 80, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, oh, he I also did FedEx commercials back in like, yeah. Uh, I believe he also had a spot on Sesame Street doing the uh, alphabet when he, like his child's name was A, B, C, D, E, D, E, F, G, or whatever. So he talks really fast. I think it's like Moshita or something like that. Anyways, that's beside the point. We got a lot to get into. Um, anything else we need to cover? Patreon. So yeah, we've got the FCL thing. Uh, later in July, our movie watch along is going to be Space Jam. So again, if you're at the five dollar tier, earlier uh, in July we have another movie watch along. It's going to be Captain America: The First well, Avenger. Hold on, That's I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Saturday, we'll be doing the breakdown of Bad Batch. My brother will be doing the Bad Batch breakdown. On Monday, we will be doing a public watch-along of Captain America, the first Avenger, to celebrate both July 4th and uh, Black Widow coming out. There. Got it all. Moving on. <laughs> okay. So looking looking back on the Whatever. episode from last week. Yeah. <laughs> looking back at the episode from last week, uh, anything, any thoughts from last week going into this episode this week? No. No, it was a great episode. Glad it happened. <laughs> <laughs> was it a filler episode? It was not a filler episode. And for people who thought it was a filler episode, they're now extremely wrong because everything that happened in that episode was necessary for this episode. So, Fantastic. <laughs> Chris, your thoughts on if it being a filler episode? Filled the spot where a third episode should go very nicely. I feel like I Almost word for word how you said it before. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, last week's episode was an episode that was needed to really kind of like flesh out like at least the dynamic between Loki and Sylvie, and that's what allowed this week's episode to happen. Uh, the really super quick uh, review or, or explanation of what happens in this episode this week, uh, Loki and Sylvie are still stuck on Lamentus. Uh, it's about the Ark is destroyed. They can't get off the planet. They're having a really good personal connection. And because of their personal connection, it creates one of these weird nexus events, uh, therefore alerting the TVA to the presence. TVA goes in and arrests them. There's this whole interaction like uh, with Loki and Sylvie trying to explain to the TVA that they're not actually created, that they all used to be variants. Uh, things happen <laughs> it, it, amongst the research and Excited revelations. And everything. Yeah. Uh, and it ends up with uh, Loki and Sylvie being brought to the timekeepers and just all heck breaks loose in front of the timekeepers uh, with Loki being pruned and cast away to somewhere we don't know, but we'll dive into here in a little bit. And then Sylvie's got uh, Renslayer, like, right at, with the, whatever the gadget is, the pruning spear, right at her throat saying, I want to know everything. And you know what? So do we, the audience. <laughs> so do we. So, 
diving into this uh first of all uh the like first shot of this we got this beautiful backwards shot of asgard asgard <laughs> well it's back I, asgard <laughs> nice i like i like the idea of us getting a different angle on the uh the palace and everything in asgard to show us that we're not quite in the asgard that we know yeah mm-hmm. it's an artistic choice guys yep <laughs> Also, I didn't know that the palace was that flat. Like, it really looks like it's a lot flatter than it looked like in all the other shots that we've seen. That's like if you were to see, like, the back of my hair and just realize that my hair is only really pointy, like, right up front, and there's nothing back here. Not true, but... I love the commentary on the thickness of the Asgardian palace. It's good content. (laughs) Good content. That palace is (laughs) not thick. It's thick with one C. (laughs) (laughs) anyways uh we then got uh, a nice glimpse at uh essentially baby sylvie here um sylvie as a kid playing with her toys in asgard i like to point out that the toys that she's playing with like in her left hand there Mm -hmm. is seemingly what looks like valkyrie on the horse and then down next to her you've got that boat and then what looks like fenris the dog from uh ragnarok wolf the wolf dog yeah Mm -hmm. uh and that that boat is very similar to the ship that they got all the asgardians on to flee ragnarok so nice little nice little easter eggs i would say uh we saw sylvie gets uh sylvie got uh caught and uh she got got. slayer she got gotten uh by renslayer who we saw is uh, in this flashback is a minute minute complete with uh, all the little gadgets on the screen too. Cool. Um, <laughs> so uh, the thing I liked about this is like the minute men have all been referred to by letters and numbers. Uh, you can kind of see it there on her shoulder. She is minute men a 23, mm-hmm. which is a nice throwback to her first appearance in Avengers 23. So yeah, cool. uh before we go any further, I did want to uh, dive in real quick. What was y'all's uh, favorite favorite parts of this episode? Mm, my favorite parts is kind of interesting. I what, it took me a while to decide because, like I, I'll talk about a lot later. This was a very emotionally troubling episode for me. I did not handle it well. People were in my <laughs> DMs concerned. Like, are you okay, Kelsey? <laughs> yeah, she um, wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the scene with him talking with Mobius and he's, you know, kind of like calling him up. be like, are you a, like, are you having feelings for her? Are you narcissist? You're f- like that. And the look on Loki, like Tom Hiddleston acting, I always got to praise it. And that scene where he looks so frustrated and conflicted, like he doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know how to articulate. No, that's not right. But like, you can just see he's like kind of, almost at a loss for words for what he is feeling at that moment about, towards Sylvie because he doesn't know. And I just like that scene because First of all, Mobius. Oh my gosh, Owen Wilson did a great job with that scene. But then, I, like I said, Tom's face is just, he's so he's so good at acting. He's so good. That was a good scene. <laughs> uh, my favorite aspects. Uh, actually, I have two, and we're actually going to end up talking about them. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the question effectively now, as we will talk about both of the aspects here in a little bit. So there you go. Okay. So after we got the introduction to baby Sylvie, of course, we see the Nexus event being created because apparently Loki and Sylvie may be falling in love. Well, as the planet is destroying, (laughs) which was a gorgeous shot. Right. It it really is. Um, Real quick, though, before we move off of young Sylvie, uh, Mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight that uh, the TVA always comes in and grabs people who are are uh, breaking breaking the rules apparently on to uh, as to what they're supposed to be accomplishing within within the timeline and everything. Uh, in that situation, you see, uh, I saw this on Twitter, so I'm going to compliment whoever I saw it on Twitter from. I don't know the names, but uh, you see her playing with her toys, and she's effectively acting out a an event where Ragnarok, not Ragnarok, but Asgard is being saved. She's she's playing a hero situation. Uh, then, as you see her being processed, she's she's going through the TVA, and you see this the other guy that TVA's got in there, and she's like, "Save him, save him!" 
So you're seeing like two instances right off the bat where Sylvie actually has a heart of a hero effectively. Mm -hmm. And that is not who Loki is supposed to be. According to the TVA, Loki has to be a villain who loses. Mm -hmm. And so therefore she is not living the life that Loki is supposed to be living. Therefore she needs to be pruned from the timeline. That's what I thought was like really, really interesting about seeing through that that beginning part is like they kind of gave us not just her backstory, but why the TVA picked her up to begin with. If you're really paying attention, it's not arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so again, we got uh, we we've got Loki and Sylvie get rescued from Lamentus, um, and Loki gets Loki gets punished, or at least he's like put in that like holding kind of like a holding time loop for a while while Mobius continues to research a nice little cameo by a really dark image, but it's Lady Sif uh, doing this whole Groundhog Day thing where it just replays her upset that Loki cut her hair, which is what happened in the comics as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Loki cut her hair. She's all upset and she's just repeatedly racking him in the groin. And it's hilarious because shots to the nuts are always hilarious but i thought that was gonna be the most distressing part for me in this episode I'm just like, <laughs> what, saying goodbye to tom no. hiddleston's twig and berries yeah that <laughs> would be distressing wouldn't it i was very convinced that was why i was gonna be upset and then nope nope, nope that, was, that was just warming me up for later <laughs> loki's <laughs> man parts are useless now <laughs> the uh interesting thing here is i believe this it, this is the first time that we have seen sif in MCU proper, we're not counting Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore, I guess. This is the first time we've seen Sif since Thor The Dark World. Mm -hmm. She wasn't in Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been in any other movie. So she was, she was busy filming her TV show where she's covered in tattoos. Right, right, right. So kind of kind of cool to see uh kind of cool to see her come back. Yeah. Uh that was not I, I believe she's also going to be in Love and Thunder. So was nice that she wasn't there when Ragnarok was happening or, you know, when uh, Hela was killing off all the Warriors 3. Can't but... wait to see that story about where she was at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need... Sif, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, that was just a funny scene, but I kind of like it because it really did... Like, I don't know if Loki was being honest with himself in regards to what he was saying to Sif, or if he actually did like get that realization. Cause again, this isn't the Loki that had come to like those realizations throughout the MCU. Like the other Loki has this variant. Loki was still a bad Loki coming mm -hmm. off of Avengers. So is this a part of like him becoming that better Loki? Can find a better Loki, or however the Pearl Jam song goes. I can't remember. Wow. Yeah, I tried it, failed miserably. Moving on, anyways. Um, the other one I wanted to bring up was, uh, well, actually, you know, this might tie back into something that happens later. Uh, I'm gonna hold on to this for just a second. Um, there's a whole lot of researching that's going on through this, of course, Mobius, and uh, you've got. Uh, who is it like B15 is they're trying to figure out like exactly what's going on. B15 has her, her little tete on tete with uh, Sylvie. Uh, you got Mobius is also trying to find information. Uh, I do like Mobius talking to uh, B15 uh, saying like all these things that have constantly caused problems like Kree Titans and vampires. Vampires. Yeah. Like that was a nice yeah. like little nod. Of course, we all know who the Kree is by now. Uh Titans, uh I mean the only real mention of Titans that we've heard so far is Thanos is from the planet Titan or the moon of Titan or whatever. Uh Titans will be more heavily used in Eternals in the Eternals and of course, movie coming up. We know when Mobius mentions vampires, Mobius <laughs> is talking about Morbius. Mobius all Morbius, yeah. Uh okay. also Blade. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nice little nod there that they are opening the door for the possibility of vampires to exist in the MCU. I feel like that's one of those like psycho psychology things. If we mention it, therefore you already know. You're going to be more accepting later. 
Yeah, when like you got Mahershala Ali showing up, uh, killing fools with fangs, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, well, I was expecting this. Even more so if we mention it in something as bat freaking crazy as this show has been, it vampires are gonna be nothing later. <laughs> it seems like the vampires are normal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just just vampires? Oh, that's fine. Uh, the other thing I liked was I think when uh, Loki and Sylvie were doing that Nexus event, you saw like the screen. Uh, there was a screen showing the this Nexus thing growing, but it also had like the ticker at the bottom as to where else like places are like screwing up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one of them was uh, Morag, which mm -hmm. was uh, where Star Lord got the the Power Stone, Power Stone. at the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So nice little nice little mention nod there. Mm -hmm. Um. So this whole thing with Mobius, Mobius is researching, and then he inexplicably gets pruned. Like, he just goes bye-bye. Uh, so uh, reaching forward, we know that, like, Loki's going to get pruned as well, but we actually see kind of an idea of where Loki winds up. What do you think happened with Mobius in this? Did he actually die, or is he also somewhere else? Yeah, I think he has to be somewhere else. I, to me personally, I feel like if Lo just Lokis are the ones that somehow go to a place that they're fine and everyone else dies, I think that does not make any sense. So I think it means that when people are pruned, they have to go somewhere, whether they're all the same place or they all have their, like, their own little, like all the variants for that person are in one spice in somewhere. Like, I don't know. That's what I want to find out. But I I feel like that means they're there somewhere. I just, it, it would not make sense to me in the story for just Lo Lokis to be fine and other people aren't, so. Yeah, at, at the point in the episode where we see Mobius get pruned, we would effectively think that he died, but mm -hmm. the show has given us precedent now based on the entire episode and what happens in the post credit scene that there's reason to believe that anybody who gets pruned is off somewhere else mm -hmm. and could come back in some way or another. Uh, I definitely think we're going to see Mobius again. Yeah, that's what I say. I hope so because he's one of like the stars of this show. Yeah. So like he's like the one of the top build after he is the top build after Tom Hiddleston. Mm -hmm. So he's the next big name actor in the show. So yeah, I, that would be kind of weird if he's out by like the fourth episode and still like two episodes left to go. That's more of just a extended guest appearance, so to speak. Yeah, I think he, we will see him back as well. Uh I like one thing what this show's doing, and I feel like we we need to just yeah yeah because that's what I'm wondering. Like when you get pruned, like you like for them, are they sent off to like just a fantasy place where they just stay away? And now he's just like in the '90s drinking his Josta Cola on a jet ski. Like, is he actually living that life that he wanted to live this entire time? Maybe so. That might be interesting. Might be a hard time trying to get him to come back from that. <laughs> I think you also just stumbled upon why he likes the Josta Cola is because that's what he was used to drinking back from wherever he got picked up from. Yeah, uh, that when when they uh, started mentioning that they all these all, all the like uh, time Minutemen people they all have an actual past in history because they're all variants. So they're all remembering, I guess, parts of like their variant childhood or variant past. Uh, maybe they even remember parts of the actual person that they're the variant of's past. Uh, okay. Yeah, that might be something in there that his was from some surfer dude from like the 90s. Probably He's talking like Polly Pau Shore or something. <laughs> Explains why he likes the jet skis. Yeah. yeah. Hanging Ted now, the big jet skier. Yeah. Just something like that. <laughs> That's a reference to make in the middle of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the the other thing I like from the very beginning, we kind of get like this idea that like the whole TVA is leading up to like this Wizard of Oz like and like simile type of thing. Like obviously you got Loki as Dorothy, uh Sylvie is kind of coming off a little as like the Wicked Witch of the West, Elphaba, maybe like more of like the Wicked version of Elphaba and not the actual 
Wizard of Oz, Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, so where she still kind of has some good in her, but anyways, thoughts on that. <laughs> Any other allusions to the Wizard of Oz that y'all have seen? I mean, there's one big one if we're getting to it, because yeah. I've been calling it on each of these episodes so far is that our uh, our timekeeper buddies are a big Wizard of Oz illusion themselves. I mean, these guys are freaking. Uh, let's be honest; these guys are freaking robots, guys. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. you know, the we here's the thing: like when they first showed them to us, mm-hmm. like in their full glory, not just red eyes and some fog. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, is it? These are kind of cool. I I don't know what's happening here, but wow, they're mm-hmm. really like committing to this and then they just started like falling apart like broken Chuck E. Cheese robots I was like okay what are we doing (laughs) where's the man behind the curtain I want to see the man behind the curtain pay no attention to the man behind the curtain that's the big thing now like the scene like like you said we we, we had to talk about it for a while that we kind of figured that's where it was going but now it's like okay that's confirmed who that's what I'm like dying to know is like so who is the person controlling this and causing all this to happen and i'm i can't i'm hoping sooner rather than <laughs> no no timekeepers it was agatha oh, all no, along we know. it was agatha we got it we, we, <laughs> we figured it out y'all <laughs> <laughs> there's a thing like actually i would absolutely love if like out of nowhere all of a sudden like katherine hahn pops up in this and like it's her sh- her show also that would be hilarious and i would actually be okay with that I mean, like, well done, Marvel. Just well even, done. Even if it doesn't necessarily make sense, because I'm pretty sure uh, WandaVision is supposed to happen after this show initially. So it's a different timeline. Yeah, it's true. That one got pruned. Time makes, yeah. Time makes no sense <laughs> in this world. So uh, I do like that as uh, Loki and Sylvie are being brought before the timekeepers, like, as they're walking down, like all the lights in the hallway, they're all yellow, so they're following the yellow brick yellow road brick type road. of thing. Yeah, and the timekeepers look like the wizard and stuff. Uh, the thing I like to point out is back in uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, let's call it Fat Wuss just because it's easier to say. Uh, back in Fat Wuss, uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam was saying that uh, every time they go to fight, they always fight like these three types of villains. It's always androids, aliens, and wizards. That there looks like an android head to me. Mm-hmm. Now I, I, I'm I'm no rocket scientist, but that no there looks surgeon. like a that there looks like a robot to me. One of them fancy robots. Exactly. Well, that's true. I mean, they even mentioned like they're androids in the in the episode. So, absolutely, yeah, we know we know that this kind of falls into that big three. If it's, we got the androids. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, is though they're androids. So they weren't actually seemingly the ones in control here. They were just placeholders for whoever else is in control and in power and stuff. Uh, So that kind of brings me back to the one that I skipped here is seemingly the one who seems the most knowledgeable as to what's going on is Rinslayer. So, like... <laughs> two aliens found out that the wizards were actually androids. Mind blown! I mean, I theoretically, yeah. That, that's that's what happened there. Yeah. Uh, so, Rinslayer is seeming, seemingly the one that knows everything going on. Now, if we go back to our first breakdown of uh, the first episode, uh, I know I briefly uh, put on the nerd glasses, and these aren't the nerd glasses. These are the regular glasses. The nerd glasses no, are still still nerd glasses. Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I put on the nerd glasses and explained that Renslayer used to, in the comics, uh, used to be a lover of Kang the Conqueror. Um and that we knew Kane the Conqueror is coming to the MCU. I don't know if we actually called out, like, could Kang potentially show up in this show? I mean, he's been casted for uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. So is it possible that they could get him 
say in the final episode and he's the one who's actually in control this entire well, time. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe part of the show was filmed towards the beginning of at least the beginning of uh, lockdown and stuff. So before everything really started shutting down, they were still, you know, kind of in the middle of filming parts of the show. I think by that point, I know we talked about like a news story later on about him being casted as Kang in quantum quantum mania. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think, you know, based on the way Hollywood stuff goes, a lot of times people are casted way before you see the announcement. And it's just between the casting directors, producers, and the actor themselves. Mm-hmm. So there's a situation where I believe he was casted long before we even heard about it through the news circuit and probably actually filmed at least a scene for this show. It's very possible that we could see him pop up here. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I'm wondering if this is going to be something like maybe towards the uh, the last episode. I mean, we've got two more episodes now. So uh, theoretically, we could have like the entire fifth episode where Rin Slayer is still kind of like playing coy uh, as to who's really in control, who's really in power. And we don't find out until the end of the sixth episode. Or she might just flat out say, oh, yeah, it's Kang. And to get to him, you have to go through me. And then she somehow like superpowers up or something. And that's the whole like sixth episode is everyone against her. Of course, then there's also depending on what else happens in this episode could also have a hand in that, which I'm almost assuming it will because we were shown in this episode that other stuff is happening. If that makes sense. It was very ambiguous, but I think I'm following. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, the, the whole question is what is Renslayer hiding? Uh, what is she really up to? Is uh, C20, the Minuteman, Minute Woman, C20, uh, minute is person. she, is she, yeah, the Minute Person, is she really dead? Because we didn't actually see her die or prune or. Mm-hmm. I say prune, no. and I'm imagining someone who's like soaking in a bathtub too long. I'm all pruney. <laughs> Uh, no, good what, joke, y'all. What, what we saw, what we saw from her, I'm just letting you sit in it tonight. I don't even care. <laughs> I know. You've earned it. You've earned the ability to sit in it. Um, no, what we, I mean, what we saw, I think, is is what you get. I mean, face value. You look at the the device that Mobius took from Renslayer. I forget what they call them, but the you look at the, yeah, that thing. You look at the, uh, you look at it and. It's showing that she's freaking out like, hold on. No, I've had a life. I remember being in that bar. I remember this, that, and the other happening. And then, of course, you see Renslayer. Enhance. Enhance. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I think I think what you see is what you get with that. I don't think that she has been pruned. I think she's still being held off somewhere. I mean, she could be pruned. Uh, apparently, it doesn't really matter anymore, according to what this episode told us. But uh I think that she's still around and still hanging out somewhere. Yeah. All of the above. She exists somewhere. <laughs> Rachel saying this is veering in the hot tub time machine territory. I, I guess. <laughs> Just as long as someone comes back from this rich. Uh, okay. Yeah. This. Uh, that was the other thing. And I forgot to, I guess, notate it to bring it up. But yeah, when they show the timekeepers, uh, they look a lot like the uh, the elders uh what i forgot what they're called jeez uh, uh in bill and ted when they show the the three of them like sitting there in the hover chairs that's what that kind of looks like so uh yeah. both of them I, I i feel like that might have actually been intentional i mean of course both of these properties kind of play to the same uh, like nerdy demographic they both have to do with time time travel adjusting time so yeah i feel like that might be very a nice little nod to Bill and Ted. Uh, just as long as the Android would have said party on dudes before its head got ripped off. That would have been awesome. That would have taken me way out of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, what else I liked about this um, was what introducing us to the aspect as a whole of the fact that Sylvie is showing showing these agents the lives that they had before uh, they, by explaining, of course, that she can't give them new memories 
And we saw this while she was, you know, uh, talking with uh, B-15 and showing her, you know, this is the life you led before. And I love that because it turned B-15 from a character that was like, all right, here's just this hard ass, you know, government agent type person. And now we actually get to see some more like character coming out of her and everything and some emotion and everything coming through like, no, I'm going to help them because there's some stuff that's seriously wrong here. And I, I loved that. I don't know. I don't, they didn't show if she got pruned again, not that that even matters anymore. Apparently uh, they didn't show if she got pruned, just knocked the F down onto the floor. Um, so <laughs> appreciate uh, Chris Tucker and Friday. You got not the F out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, possibly, possibly. Uh, she was, and that was the thing. Like she was like the hard, like stickler, uh, mm-hmm. like the very intimidating minute man, minute woman, minute person, uh, like minute individual. We got to figure out how how to word this. The uh, minute individual. In yeah. IMDb, they're listed as minute men, even though the fem- the women. So I think it's just minute men. Well, so it's like effective. Not... It's it's like, it's, it's like when you're like. Still- Still, Spectre still a Watchman. I mean, you just—it's like in the middle of uh, in the middle of like mm-hmm. you know military or like mm-hmm. anything. They'll mm-hmm. still call like female captains. You know, I'm thinking more like Star Trek because that's what's coming to my mm-hmm. mind. But they'll still call the female captains sir. Mm-hmm. Well, that's in the future where like we've got a hard like grasp on wokeness and whatnot. So, <laughs> what to call people? <laughs> They're like, okay, we figured this out. We're just, sir. <laughs> That's everyone's a sir. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We'll cu- we'll cut out the Minutemen, <laughs> middle man, <laughs> the middle woman too, uh, the middle person. Uh, sitting anyways, it, just, sitting it, just <laughs> stewing it. Uh, that one I'm okay with. That one I'm happy. I, I I'll, I'll put my stamp on that one. That one was pretty good. If I do say so myself. Uh. I do like in this this battle in front of the the timekeeper robots uh, that again Loki and Sylvie have like a nice little connection there, and then Loki just gets stabbed in the back. Take it away, Kelsey. <laughs> okay, I have never burst into sobs so quickly in my entire life. I don't cry. I'm not a crier. I don't cry in sad parts of movies. I don't cry. Like I just don't cry. But the second, like, do, do I need to take this see, off the screen or take it off the screen? Little, let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> when you see that little glow, like, as soon as I realized what's happening, I'm just, I'm just, I started crying and hyperventilating, and I felt like I was gonna throw up, and my chest hurt, and I started texting everybody that was watching at the same time, just swearing a lot, and I was so upset that when the post credit scene came on, I just saw his face, and I just was like, oh my god, he's still there. I didn't even pay attention to anything that happened after that. <laughs> so I had to go back and rewatch the ending just so I could see everything happens in the post credit scene. Cause as soon as I saw his face, that's all I cared about. I'm like, okay, he's not gone. But yeah, so Disney you nearly killed me. And it just, <laughs> Did you say something that. about like getting like a serious case of whiplash from that? Yes. What? Like literally <laughs> I felt like I'm like, like, I felt like a near like mental breakdown to like, Oh my gosh, she's back. And it was just, it was just, it was too much Disney. I mean, I liked it. It was good, but it was too much. <laughs> Dang it, Disney. Stop making us think people die. Oh, I've had so, to watch him die so many times. <laughs> I just don't want right. to do it anymore. Well, let's do another one. <laughs> what, uh, just, oh my gosh. <laughs> what, I, what I loved about this, and I saw other people bring it up again, is that this is like a huge allusion to that dagger metaphor that he brought up earlier where it's like love is there it's the dagger as soon as you reach for it though it disappears and that's exactly what we saw in this scene which is interesting to me because i believe i said it before i I was a big proponent on them not having a romantic connection just let them just let them be individuals but Mm -hmm. story-wise i see what they're doing and it just it makes sense i get it i understand it yeah, I'm 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 very pro not having them be love interests. I'm still they probably are, but I'm still in the camp where like they they care for each other. They're figuring this out. They don't know what that means or why. Yeah. Like you, and so like it could be 
platonic. It could be self-love, like because they are seeing the things about themselves in each other that they don't accept about themselves, but they're accepting it about each other. So it's like a way of self-acceptance because they're supposed to be, you know, these sad, losing villain people. But if they're starting to understand themselves, they can grow. Growth leads to, you know, it's like that. So I'm still hoping they're not romantic because I, because everyone's argument is that, well, Loki's a narcissist, makes sense for him to love himself. Narcissists yeah. don't actually like themselves usually that much. It's actually a coping mechanism because they have insecurity. They have a grandiose. And Loki's shown that many times, that, even in the same the show, that he is putting a lot of this on to be able to do what he does. So I don't think that is necessarily true that he's such a narcissist he'd fall in love with himself because of that because i don't I th think he's that kind of narcissist <laughs> I, I think for sure they're 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 going to dive in and play up maybe mm -hmm. at least somewhat of a romantic angle at first i i'm gonna go ahead and say that by the end of this show they're not going to be an mm -hmm. an item they're not going to be together in any way uh just for whatever line of reasoning the show wants to introduce to keep that from mm -hmm. happening. Uh, but I did like the juxtaposition of the situation with him, you know, facing Sif those multiple times and having to come to the realization of I am alone and I will always be alone. And then that pose next to here's somebody who, you know, I can be with or, or something. And in that regard, again, she's still technically another Loki. So it, you could, in a certain point of view, you could qualify it as him still being alone because he's just with himself. But he's with him. He's with herself. That's, that's too much. Anyway, so I'm going to continue with this breakdown and move away from any possible self-love jokes that we could be making in, at this very time in this episode breakdown. So if you would like to hear self-love jokes, just Google the internet. <laughs> you'll find me on Twitter time. and Facebook. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of a single one. Uh, yeah, whatever. Stop lying to our audience. I mean. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the other thing I will point out that I liked on this. So I, I don't know if y'all y'all seen across the internet, but a lot of people are uh, screenshotting uh, Loki falling a lot mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, if you notice, Loki tends to fall a lot. Yes, and yes. every time he falls, he's always in that same position where he's just like kind of like laying down and mm -hmm. uh, well, the camera's flip. off uh, more like this where he's laying down <laughs> and he has to like Holy. pick himself back up. And he's in that same position like all the time. He always lands in and falls and lands in that position. Um, so I kind of like how like this episode's calling back to those instances where he keeps doing that. I think another thing that hap has happened before that this episode's calling out specifically with, sorry, Kelsey, with this shot <laughs> is uh, that <laughs> again, we, it moves from the shot. We see that Renslayer has that, that pruning spear thing behind him. It's very similar to Loki here, uh, stabbing Coulson through the back with this thing. I feel like I'm giving like a hot toys demonstration. Like this is the hot toys of Loki. Uh, but mine got postponed. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, but like him stabbing Coulson through the back in Avengers, it's almost this. It's like the same exact attack. Now, granted, Renslayer's uh, spear doesn't actually have a sharp, pointy thing that like pokes out his chest, but it, it, it's still the the act of it is the same. I kind of like that. So you got both a callback to him stabbing Coulson, but also the fact that this is Loki. He's known for stabbing people in the back, and he gets stabbed in the back. Yep. It's a nice little... It's one of those things. You can see the artistic merit when they put together shows and movies and stuff like this. It's it's a mm -hmm. an eye for the little things like that. Very and clever. It, very clever. Yes. It, mm -hmm. It's very nice. I like it. <laughs> very nice. I don't know why that's Borat, but for some reason. Man, you are just in a place tonight. <laughs> I am kind of in a weird, funky place, and I have no idea how I got here or how I'm going to get out, but I'm pretty sure part of it is going to involve my bed. Well, we'll just prune you. It's okay. With no self love. Never mind. Uh, anyway, so. 
<laughs> Moving on. I hate everything. Well, guys, it's been a great episode. Y'all care. So we're going to move on to the last part of the show, the last part of the episode now, which is the the cut, the cut scene, the post credit scene at the end, which is the part that one made Kelsey the happiest and two made a lot of nerds out there really happy too. Yep. You can come back now. It's okay. There it goes. So let's dive into this uh, post credit scene <laughs> and explain exactly what the heck is happening here. What is that voice? I don't <laughs> know. I feel like I was gonna, I was trying to go the way, you know what? I- <laughs> so we got variant Loki's in this post credit scene where we realized that Loki is when he has been pruned, has been transported to somewhere else. This somewhere else looks like a variant of New York City, and the only reason I'm able to point that out is if you look over on the right side of the image that's currently on your screen, you will see the Avengers Tower in some form of wreckage, Mm -hmm. which is really, really interesting because in the center of your screen, you will see three individuals who I can't properly explain other than Mr. Richard E. Grant over there being dressed in the classic loki costume which was awesome so if anyone feels like explaining that we can bounce back and forth between this image and explaining it (laughs) well i will explain that image so there you go uh actually i'm going to correct you there's actually four individuals in that shot that's Uh, right so so first of all we we see uh, after loki's been pruned he wakes up in whatever this is he's thinking it's hell it kind of looks like hell and uh, for any of y'all that are parents that are worried with your kids watching our program i'm actually saying hell h e l as in the the norse uh yep. version of hell not the actual h e double hockey sticks that we're all used to that's a bad word and we're not going to say that here so i'm only Some referring to it right. as yeah, I was only right I'm too. only referred to as hell with one L. Hell, we're not gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's in reference to the Asgardian hell. That one's fine. Hell yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, good job. That's another great reference. Um <laughs> so he the thing is, is he wakes up amongst all these Loki's. Now, my first question when I saw this is do you pronounce it Loki? Loki's or is it Loki's or Loki's? Like, what's the plural of Loki here? Flock of Loki's. A flock of Loki's. A, <laughs> a few times in the show, they say Loki's plural, like as that. So I, I guess that's just what they've decided is the official thing. I prefer to Loki like that. It just gets a little scientific and weird. Like that so I like Loki's. Um, Loki's. So Eric here is saying the. Building to the bottom left looks kind of like the top of the Sanctum Centorum. Uh, Don't up. Yeah, I know. We're probably just going to keep looking at this. Um, uh, I can't see any distinguishing. Fe- well, yeah, I can't tell. I can't really see any distinguishing features on it. The, um, I'm looking for that. Like, was it that half moon symbol that's typically on the mm-hmm. the Santorum? Sanctum like Centorum. Just- raise the shadows or whatever on it so we can see better. Yeah, possibly. I probably just need to throw it through like an image editor to really get a good shot. But uh, so uh, I'm going to keep it on this real quick as I explain who these people are. Uh, Of course, you got Richard E. Grant there on the right in the very classic Loki get up kind of close to uh, what he was wearing in his first appearance in Journey into Mystery number 85 and also uh, pretty much his costume from Avengers number one. In the middle here, you've got uh, Kid Loki. Uh, Kid Loki comes from like a uh, a 2011 comic book. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of this because it's long and absurd, but he's basically Loki's revived as a kid uh, in France named Sereri? I don't know. It's French for Locke. We'll just call him Locke. His name's Locke. Uh, but anyways, yeah, there's this whole like Loki as a kid, uh, comic, go check it out. Cause it's all kinds of bonkers. Uh, but he's also holding the crocodile Loki. Crokey. 
Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea what in the H-E single hockey stick that Crocodile Loki is, but, I mean, it's a crocodile with a Loki crown on it, so Kel- there you Kelsey, go. you said Crokey. Do, 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 yeah. do you know who it is? Well, I've uh, other people who know more than I do about characters have told me that that's what they refer to as Crokey, like Crocodile Loki, Crokey, like, th- like Throg. Like, I was going to say, do you think we get to see Frog, frog then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm. I, I, they're doing the animal stuff. I think there there is a chance, at least for mention of frog. So we'll, we'll see. I will say, uh, keep in mind that the MCU has dived as deep as uh, showing us like Ego and Howard the Duck, Cosmo, <laughs> Cosmo. Like the absurd characters, they're no longer mm-hmm. afraid of showing like just the absurd, like crazy comic book. They're okay with that. Uh, mm-hmm. I would love to see Frog Thor at some point. That would be hilarious. But uh, uh, the other me, one... you call him by his Christian name. It's Throg. Throg. The, the Christian name. The the Norse god that's a frog has a Christian name. Okay, <laughs> you caught my joke. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other one is this guy that uh, is referred to as Boastful Loki. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know too much about this guy. He looks like he's got what looks like Mjolnir, a different version of Mjolnir that looks like instead of it being attached to a handle, it looks like it's attached to a wrench mm-hmm. and it's gold. Uh, assuming that uh, the idea is if all these Lokis come from variant like timelines that this variant Loki may have like conquered Asgard and is now ruling benevolently and so therefore he is uh, he is now worthy of possessing Mjolnir and that's why he has it. He's no longer some evil Loki. Uh, I'm almost willing to bet we will probably get some kind of explanation of uh, these Lokis in the next episode. So, My theory is I I think there this might be like where we see like President Loki and things like that. I think there might be other Lokis in that area that just aren't you know just happen to be walking up to him when he crashes there. So I'm interested to see whom else we're gonna see besides I I'm sure if any, if there's a place for President Loki to be, the series seems to be kind of like where it's he's gonna show up. So like who else? Sure. What other version or this or this Loki, this Loki that's landed here is mm-hmm. now referred to as, as- the the ultimate Loki, so okay. he becomes the yeah. president Loki yep. over okay. all the other Lokis or Lokis or Lokises, yep. whatever. Um. Anyways, yeah, that's that's probably it for this episode. That was a whole lot of breaking this down and like really acknowledging what happened. This was a fantastic episode. Uh, I just real, real quick, I just want to make sure that we highlight this. Uh, that I'm going to go ahead and say that Kelsey called it on Richard E. Grant. He's I don't yeah. think he's like King Loki, he, but he's, but an older version he, of Loki is he's still like quite. <laughs> yeah, he's still old Loki. In which case, I'm gonna give that that's a point for Kelsey. We weren't keeping track of points this entire time. Probably should have been. That would have been yeah. fun. Yeah. Remember that for next time. Uh, <laughs> that's a point for Kelsey on that one, though. Yeah, because again, we were saying that Richard E. Grant does look like a Loki, and you yeah. are accurately saying, "Yeah, but he's going to be a little bit older." So, yeah, an older version of Loki. That was a good call, and he he looks fantastic, even though it's the really cheesy looking costume. Kind of reminds me of like the uh, the Halloween costumes of Wanda and Vision back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was their show called? Was it Vision Wanda? I can't remember. Wanda. So. What- we're going to move on to plugs now. Um. Yeah. Uh, if Those of y'all watching, if y'all have any other questions, comments, anything that you want to say, get those in real quick. Streamlabs.com slash Cinefanatics is still open. So are the Super Chats. Uh, any other thing that you saw that we may have missed, let us know. Drop that in real quick. Uh, Kelsey, where can we find you? All right, you can find me at KelseyKins90 on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me here every week talking about Loki. We only have a couple episodes left, so it's not for much longer, but I'm super excited to be here. At uh, 4.30 Pacific Time, also on Wednesdays, I'm on Shmomi the Money talking about Loki. And then on Thursdays at 7 Pacific Time, I'm on Jesse uh, Swift's channel for Flick and Reel, where we talk about Loki. So I'm on Kelsey's Loki Press Tour 2021, people have been calling it. 
Um, and then Call to Action. If you like Schmodown uh, and you like me, you can watch me talk about Schmodown on Call to Action. It's fun. So check me out there. That's, yeah. That's it. <laughs> on the two-time award-winning Call two-time. to Action podcast. Yep. So. <laughs> I think you got it. I think you, I think you got it this time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's probably some more I probably could have said, but uh, there's no reason to. We got we we got it. They're they're good. They're award winning. They do good good work over there on that channel. The, they're doing the Lord's work over there, uh, <laughs> wow. Or at least the Norse version of the Lord, whatever that is. Odin. They're doing the Odin's work over there. <laughs> the All Father. <laughs> the All Father's work. <laughs> Chris. <the> time. <laughs> yeah. Where can where can they find you? Well, I mean, specifically, you can find me at Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at Chris Adams MLP. You can also find me specifically uh, streaming over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Uh, I'll be picking that back up here pretty soon since I've already had a match in the Schmodown's FCL. So now that that is done, we are we got a little bit of time to stretch and relax and play some games and have some fun over there. So follow me over there. Uh, for us though, we got a bunch of stuff that's happening here and I want to encourage everyone to jump onto that Patreon. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff happening on that Patreon here coming up, including watch alongs, uh, movie trivia nights to help us study and get even better and better and better for our FCL matches. So you definitely want to be a part of that discord access. That's just a $1 thing. Just throw a dollar into that Patreon. You get the, ex- Ugh, I can't even talk. You get the access to the discord is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying not to say a, Bad word there. You get you get the ass to the Discord. You get the dick ass scored. Uh, wow. Access. Well, Not even close to doing that. Um, anyway, you get all that kind of stuff over on the Patreon. I meant, Richard, the, the, I meant the Richard ass. Discord. The Richard E. Grant. Uh, <laughs> did we sell you on the, on the Patreon? I hope that jumbled mess sold you on the Patreon. Please help us not be a jumbled mess anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Donating to Patreon. Um, And then, of course, you can follow us at Cinefanatics MLP, Twitter, Instagram, you know, social media stuff. Me, myself, and I, you can follow at Robert Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd as well. I believe that's going to be it. Doesn't look like any other questions. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up again. This was a lot of fun to do. Uh, Yeah, I know. I tried, Rachel. I tried. Uh, this was a, this was a fun episode to watch. Uh, a lot to talk about. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next two episodes. They're going to be a blast. So, those of y'all in the chat, thank y'all for watching this live. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you have not watched this Loki episode yet, and you are watching this on a replay, also hit that like button. You're not. You, you're not excused. You still need to hit that like button, even if you're watching it later. Uh, if you are watching it later, also comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the episode, of this breakdown. Anything else we didn't catch, we might mention it uh, during the breakdown next week as well. So make sure to let us know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions also there. And what else do we got in here? Uh, share. Share this with your friends and family. Let them know that you like us. So... That helps as well. And subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down below. So therefore, you will be the first to know when we're going live, especially if you hit that little ringy dingy bell next to it. I don't know why I had to say that a bell is ringy dingy. People know that. Anyways, let's just move on with this. As for myself, as for my brother, as for Kelsey, and as for the Loki Hot Toys Tom Hiddleston statue figure thing here, thank y'all for watching tonight. We appreciate y'all being here, and have a great evening. Good night. Bye. I'm so going straight to bed. This is wow.